Is this good? All right. I'm Michaela Harrison. I'm a sophomore at Ashland Green High School, and I'm performing Rust today. And before I start, I just wanted to say if you feel uncomfortable throughout the poem or need to leave, that you can do that. April 16th, teacher investigated for inappropriate touching. April 16th, Waverly teacher under investigation for touching student. April 17th, Waverly teacher suspended under investigation. April 25th, Waverly teacher arrested in sex assault. Waverly teacher touched student. April 26th, Waverly teacher arrested in sexual assault case involving student. We've heard all the stories, we've read all the articles, 1011 Now, Journal Star, KETV, WWT, JM Topics, Wahoo. We've seen all the coverage. Do we know the truth? I still remember the day my best friend told me it was her. If you read between the lines and uncrypted the encrypted, you could see her name. Indirect news articles, coverage, and rumors all about her purity. But do you know the truth? Because I know every detail. Details including her distaste in life after Rust, Rust touched her golden temple, how she showered three times after he closed the classroom door and teacher became predator, student became hunted, and trusted bridges became ash. Quote, if you don't turn this assignment in tomorrow, it will be a zero. Let me print it off for you. Two hours and 20 minutes later, long after the printer quit making noises, long after the hallway light shut off is when, he got, when she got her chance to leave. After, his foot wiggled its way up and between her legs, touching every corner of her innocence, sliding in between her thighs, abusively caressing her vaginal area. I could feel her fear when she told me the story. How he was angered when she tried to distance herself, how the door seemed like light years away and he felt like evilness crawling inside her close enough to kill. He pretended like nothing was happening, creating small talk while he made her life like living in a nightmare. For two hours and 20 minutes, she felt 20 feet underwater with a collapsing chest. 6 p.m. is when God decided to show mercy for those undeserving pain. 6 o'clock at night. Finally, someone gave her 20 feet of water and a sliver of air to make it out alive, but their offering was not enough because she still feels dead inside. No one was looking for her. No one was even asking. She was supposed to be at pep band that night, and it wasn't unusual for kids not to show up and for parents to assume their child is safe at school. As if this secret wasn't hard enough, going to school and pretending in his class that she was laid back and unfazed. As if it wasn't hard enough to feel safe in school when he decided, when he decided to run his fingers through her waistband and soon to her underwear line, caressing her back as he nonchalantly walked by. Students should not be afraid of their teachers. You'd think relief would spring after sources willed her strength to tell the management, but it only got worse. You should have seen the social media bashing on her last hopes of freedom, the night she made the mistake to get on Facebook. LOL, if we didn't hate the freshmen before, why lie and blow the whole thing out of proportion? Don't make up lies because you are bored with your life and need to ruin someone else's. All I see are the lies and mugshot of the best teacher I've ever had. Girls, it's not funny that you are ruining his life. Little freshman girls lie to get attention. They don't fully understand the consequences of their actions. Comments from boys and girls who couldn't even point her out in a crowd. People acting like they know the story because obviously such a nice person couldn't have possibly done something so terrible. He was a nice guy. He would never do that. Well, you know what? I bet Jeffrey Dahmer, John Gacy, Ted Bundy, and even a Waverly High School teacher were called good people by someone out there. But guess what? Good people do bad things. Mass murderers were known as good people too, but all people saw were the surface. I always wondered why sexual assault victims didn't just tell. They want to, but people like you make so they won't. People like you, as in the world. Why would anybody tell the truth if they knew no one would believe them? If they knew best friends would turn to death threats, peers would turn into loaded guns waiting for their chance to blow you away, and life would be like a bomb waiting to explode from the inside out, impacting only those who care. See, now I understand why people don't just tell when someone does something wrong because they don't want the world to hate them more than they already hate themselves. She thought she did the right thing. She thoroughly convinced herself into enough courage that telling someone would be the right thing to do. To the girls and boys that bullied her, have you ever thought about what would have happened if his life went on? What would have happened if she just didn't tell? What would have happened to the next girl? Who would have helped her? What if you were the next victim? You should be thanking her. You made her feel like death inside, 
So maybe that's why I tried committing suicide on May 20th. I overdosed on my medication. Yes, I did. Because you see, the most horrible and disgusting part of this entire story is that it wasn't hers. It was mine. <laughs> my peers made my life like hell, and I hope they know that I thank them for it. Thank you, because you made me stronger in every way for who I am today. I almost took my life, and I am still bullied, and I am still thankful, and I am still fighting, and I will never give up. So listen, never let anyone lay hands on your body that you do not lust for. Never let peers tattoo their words on your body. Never, ever let lies turn into pills going down your throat. And finally, never be afraid to make the world a better place. You are valuable, you are wonderful, you are cared for, you are not the image of his touching, you are not rust. <laughs>